Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. Three of you said good evening. Everybody doing well? Blessed of the Lord? Amen. You can probably turn me down just a hair. I got a little bit of an echo up here. But uh, praise the name of the Lord. What a be- it's so beautiful outside. We ought to go outside and have church. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's gorgeous. What an awesome day the Lord has given us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Blessed Heavenly Father, we just come before you, and we are so, so full of gratitude and so grateful. Lord God, I'm just reflecting today, Father, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What an awesome thing to know that each of our names are recorded in heaven right now, and to know that that is just not a registry, that is a declaration of your covenant and your life over us. And we just thank you and praise you, Lord God, as you continue to minister life and life more abundantly to each of us, Father, every day. We thank you that you bring us through every day. We thank you that we have breath. Because we have breath, we're going to praise the Lord. We thank you that you have provided for us, Father. You always make a way. And Lord God, we are eagerly anticipating meeting you face to face one day. And so, Lord God, we just come, we ask you to write your word on the fleshly tablets of our heart. Renew our minds that we might truly live in the life and the power and the wonder of your word. And fill us with your Holy Spirit. Continually fill us, Lord God, that we might be refreshed, regenerated, energized to walk with you. And Lord God, let your love just permeate our hearts and your holiness transform us. So we just give you the praise and the glory as you minister life to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints said, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet and just begin to thank God for what we just prayed. What you you want to thank him for today. Hallelujah. You may have went through through hell today, but the awesome thing is, is you went through it. You're here. (laughs) Hallelujah. You made it. So we just glorify your holy name, Lord God. We magnify you as, your, as a church, but more importantly, as your body, Lord God, as your children, Father, that are so enamored with you and so in love with you. And Father, we thank you that we have an open invitation to come and just sit at your feet, to bask in your presence, Lord God, to hear your words spoken into our life. So we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you for the little things in our life. We thank you, Lord God. That, Father, we woke up this morning and you gave us a great day and we thank you for our families and we thank you for the food we had and the clothes we had to put on. We, we thank you, Lord God, for all the things you're doing in our lives. You are our provider and we trust in you and you alone, Lord God. So we just magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you. Oh, come on, church. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, you are the Lord God of all majesty. You're the most high God. You're the almighty counselor, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Well, praise the name of the Lord. He said, uh, they'll know us by our love one for another, so give somebody a hug. (laughs) Hallelujah. And uh, greet them in the mighty name of Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. If you've already given somebody a hug, hug them again. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. 
I mean, you know He's reigning in your life today, whether you recognize it or not. Amen. How I mean, you know He has probably knocked away a thousand demons from you and you didn't even know it? Glory to God. He caused that car that was driving recklessly to go somewhere else and not come towards you. Amen. So God is always protecting us, always watching over us. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. And uh, no matter what's happening in your life, if you'll give him praise, you can praise your way right out of it. Amen. I said, no matter what's happening in your life, you can praise your way out of that into victory. You start thanking God for life. You start think, thanking God for health. You start thanking God for his financial blessing. You start thanking God that he is the center of your family. And you start magnifying him. And all of a sudden, your problems start to dissipate because you're giving God glory for who he said he would be to you. Amen. So praise your way into health. Praise your way into the living God's presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, last week we started on uh, For the Love of God. What, what do we do for the love of God? And when it, this, uh, tonight's part two, and it's how we're supposed to love. And uh, it's the love that will change and transform your life. You know, if you have bitterness in your, in your heart, anxieties, if you have stress, and I'm going to say this to you, if you have stress, you don't have love. Because if you have stress, you're not trusting in the Lord. Amen. So that will deliver a lot of you out of stress. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we get all caught up in things and our things begin to be bigger than our God in our own mind or in our own consciousness. And we can't allow that to ever happen. Amen. So we have to concentrate on the love of God and the goodness of God and what God has promised. Amen. Amen. Then the love of God comes in and the love of God casts out all fear. Listen, if he casts out all fear, the enemy hasn't got a hold of you at all. Therefore, healing can flow. You see, if you're afraid to die, you have fear in your life. Amen. Why should we fear death? Because death means we're only one breath away from the presence of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And when we, don't, when we don't fear and we don't let stress come into our lives, we find the power of the love of God. And that power is so strong, so awesome, the enemy has no power over it. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, so just, uh, just want to tell you, keep... Keep striving to fall in love with the Lord. The more you praise Him, the more you will be grateful for what He said He would do because you're also going to see Him do it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He inhabits the praise of His children. Hallelujah. Romans 5.8 says this, But God demonstrated, demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He demonstrated love. How are, we, how are we to love the Lord and how are we to love the unlovely? I mean, you know, there's a lot of unlo unlovely things in this world. There's a lot of people that will treat you unlovely because they've been treated unlovely and they have hurts and they have wounds and they've been, you know, beat. They've been, been uh, you know, accused. Accused of things they didn't do. They've been abused sexually, verbally, mentally, so many ways. And we need to understand, people don't want to live in sin. People never chose a life of sin. They were driven by the sin that the enemy had placed upon them through other people. Even as a child. Amen. Uh, you know, there's that study that we did, uh, uh, adverse childhood, adverse, adverse childhood experiences. And and uh, that if you have had a lot of adverse experiences as a child, it changes who you are. And uh, we did it through the 31 principalities. It changes who you are. It builds strongholds of thought inside of us. No one came out of their mother's womb and said, I want to be a sinner. No one came out and said, I want to be a Satan worshiper. No one came out and said, I want to go out and be a murderer. No one came out and said, I want to be a, someone who sexually abuses. No one came out and said, I want to be an alcoholic. No one came out of their mother's womb and said, I want to be addicted to drugs. Everyone that came out of their mother's womb wanted to be loved. And they had a vacuum inside of them that only Christ can fill. And the word says that God, Jesus, is the light that lighteth everyone that comes into this world. They had a light on inside of them, 
And it's just because evil has transgressed against them that they have become evildoers. Just like we became righteous in Christ, and because we're righteous, we do the works of righteousness. We, we act more like Him. We, we don't sin like we used to sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. So righteousness produces righteous acts. Sin, evil, produces evil acts. So we can look at what people are doing and, and, and turn against them, or we can look at them and feel the pain and the hurt that drove them to that situation and love them because Christ died for them. And he demonstrated that in his death, that I, I didn't come to save the goody people. I didn't come to save the righteous. I came to save the unrighteous. I came to save the evildoer. I've come to, to save the one who's trapped in sin. I've come to undo the heavy burdens. I've come to, to, to break the yokes and the chains of bondage in people's lives. And we as Christians ought to be laying our lives down to do the same thing for everyone that's in our world. When I say our world, our sphere of influence, the people we run into, the people we are around, the people we pass by in the street. Amen. Amen. We have to have this heart of true love, and that's why we're doing intersection prayer. Even though you're not looking up at the cars driving by, we're praying for every soul, and we should have a, a deep, moving love inside of us that wants to touch those people, that they might walk in the righteousness of God. And if they're a believer, that they might draw closer to Him, and if they are lost, that they might be saved. But we also need to take it into our homes because we, the people we love the most, the people we are around the most, we start to take for granted. We start to feel they should understand us, yet we've never really shared our hearts sometimes. We don't share our day with one another the way we should so that we can uplift one another and truly love one another. But we take our hurts and our wounds of the day and the stress of the day and we use them as the punching bag to release that stress. And so our families get, get dysfunctional. Even in Christian houses, families get dysfunctional because love is not being demonstrated the way it should be demonstrated. Hallelujah. Now praise God, none of you but that other church group down the street. Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus demonstrated it. Everybody say demonstrated. So it's one thing to say I love you. It's another thing to show it. Amen. So in your home or with your friends or with strangers, we ought to be the demonstrators of the love of God. Hallelujah. Because we're not going to change the world by just saying we love them. Even going out and praying for them, but not truly in love with them, not truly feeling their hurt and their pain, we're never going to truly love them unless we can understand what the enemy has done to drive them to that position. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you understand someone, you have a compassionate heart? And the Word of God says Jesus was moved with compassion and healed all the sick and set the oppressed free. Compassion means he understood why they were in the condition they were in. Amen. He had an understanding of the hurt and the pain. He had a knowledge of all of that so he could be moved with compassion. You see, if you don't understand someone and they're snotty with you, what's the first thing you want to be with them? Snotty right back. Amen. Jesus said when he was reviled, he reviled not. When he suffered, he threatened not. And yet, without understanding, we strike back. Without understanding, we draw lines. Without understanding, we put up a wall. And God says, no, 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 no. I didn't put up a wall. I tore a wall down. I didn't put up walls. I died to tear it down. I tore the veil from the top to the bottom and tore down what was keeping my people from being in my presence. I tore down the wall that sin had built in the souls of men, and my blood paid the price for that. So we ought to be the greatest demonstrators of God's love, one to another and to everybody we meet. And when we feel something of animosity rising up inside of us, we need to catch ourselves and say, this is not what Jesus died for. 
Because when you feel animosity rising up, you've literally taken Jesus off of the throne, put yourself on the throne, and said, I'm the one making the judgments about who this person is. And we cannot do that. In fact, we're to lay our lives down even for a stranger. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, again, we have to love God's way. And yes, if people are going to abuse God's love and and continually sin against God, God, God says withdraw from them, but continue to pray for them and continue to love them with my love. They're just not ready for the harvest yet. Amen. And you have to look at someone who's not receiving what you're giving. Don't continually give because God says if they continually reject the word of God, it's better for them to have never lived because their heart gets harder. You have to look at people and say this. If they're not receiving, they're a grape that's not ripe. Amen. So you pray over them and water them until they become ripe. And then they're easy picking. Hallelujah. You see, our job is not just to go try to get everybody to change. Our job is to love them the way Christ loved them. Our job is to explain God's holiness and his, his awesome love for them so they understand there are boundaries in the kingdom of God. Amen. Holiness sets boundaries. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. True love has boundaries. Amen. How would you like to be married to someone that wants no boundaries? You know, I'll go out and I'll have affairs with everybody I want to have. I'll do everything I want to do. I'll bring home disease to you. I'll bring home drugs and alcohol to you. I'll beat you. I'll, I'll, I have no boundaries. I mean, you know, that, that, you, that's not love. That's self. Amen. And so the Lord wants us to understand demonstrating love is the key to being spiritual in the kingdom of God. Amen? How many of you have ever seen somebody, oh, they have my men, they sound so spiritual, and then they live like hell? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> There's something wrong in that picture. Either I'm stepping on your toes or you ate too much and you're sleepy or something. I'm not getting much of a response from you tonight demonstrated his own love you have to demonstrate his own love not your love his love because his love is perfect his love is the love of God the Father if you demonstrate your love your love will come up short amen and you're going to wound and hurt other people because we have not and I have not become perfect yet in Christ Jesus. My spirit is, my mind is being renewed, but I'm not perfect yet. How many have noticed that? Yeah, you guys see the ones that raised their hand, my wife raised too. Well, let me tell you this. I know you ain't perfect yet either. So we have to demonstrate his love. We have to allow him to love through us. Amen. Now that's a real spiritual walk. Because if you're walking in that, you know what? God's love will generate a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. God's love for them will generate the power to do what they need to have done in their life. God's love will meet the need. God's love will change their heart. God's love will renew their mind because he will empower his word with that love. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's a demonstration that you and I have to have in how do we love the unlovable. And right now in our world, there's a lot of unlovable people. Right now in our world, there's a lot of things going on that are just out of the pit of hell. And people are doing those acts, making those decisions. But how are we to love them? We are to love them the way Christ did. He gave himself that we might have eternal life. So we're to give of our time, our strength, our spirit, 
that's in Christ Jesus, we have to give that for them and truly love them with the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Again, as we talked, uh, we went over this scripture last week, but it's so important to understand, if, if I have fear about something, God's love has not been perfected inside of me. So what God is saying, if you want to take that understanding, is if love is perfected, you have no fear of evil around you. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, Jesus could walk where the greatest sinner was, where the greatest trouble was, where his life was being threatened, and he had no fear. He could walk in where there was spiritual activity from hell, and he had no fear. He went to the belly of the earth, into the pit, and was tormented for three days, but had no fear. Perfect love keeps you so you can walk into the darkness and be the light. Perfect love takes you so you can walk into the vacuity in people's heart, that emptiness that's filled with evil and darkness. You can walk into it no matter what they want to do to you. You can walk in with holy boldness because love has energized you for their soul. Amen. Hallelujah. The great works the church is going to do in these last days are going to be motivated by God's love, encapsulated in His holiness. Hallelujah. 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 So He's speaking to us about how to walk in a, a love that is so refined and so perfect that we do not have fear, nor are we intimidated by anyone, no matter how evil they look, sound, or are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why, you know, when Rodney King was beaten and the riots were breaking out, we were right down in the midst of it with our team because we had no fear. We knew our God would take care of us. We were going door to door. Guns were going off down the block. People were answering their door but leaving their screens shut. And we were winning people to Jesus Christ because there wasn't any fear in our team. Folks, you can't have fear and thrive in God. You can't have, well, let someone else minister to them and I'll stay home. You can't have a situation where, well, I can't minister to those kind of people. Well, those kind of people is what you used to be. You used to be a those. Turn to someone and say, you owe those. You see, that's who we were. We may have not have done the sin that they're doing, but we were doing other sin. And if you transgress one part of the law, you transgressed it all. Amen. Amen. Except for the grace of God, we're, if God wouldn't have saved you, no telling what you'd have been doing tonight. Amen. So... We cannot cause us to set our minds and say, groups of people that I'm willing to minister to, we have to say, every soul is valuable for the kingdom of God. Every soul. And my God is with me, therefore I will fear no evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? God is with thy rod, and thy staff comfort me. He's with me. Yes. Hallelujah. And the feast he prepares in the front of you. People, you know, when you think of feast in the 23rd Psalm, he prepares a feast in the presence of mine enemy. Everybody's thinking about bread and steak and, you know, about food. Let me tell you the feast that he had prepared for you in the face of your enemy. The word of the living God is your feast. Doing the will of God is your bread. Amen. Hallelujah. When, when the disciples and Jesus hadn't eaten for several days, they came and said, should we not go buy some food? And he said, oh, I have meat that you know not of or food you know not of. They thought he had hidden a Snickers bar and was eating it and keeping it from them. He said, 
My food is to do the will of my Father. If we're in love the way God wants us to be in love and letting love flow through us, the feast is everything God is that he wants to give to us so we can set our enemy free. So we can renew their mind, bring them the love of God, the power of God, so they can find the glory of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Your feast, is, don't think about bread. Think about the bread of life. Don't think about something to drink the living water you should be thinking. The new wine of the Holy Spirit. You should be thinking about what God has given us to consume so that we can minister to those that even come against us. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we have fear and people will say, well, I don't have fear. I just don't like it. <laughs> like is a residue of fear or dislike. It's called personal preference. And you're supposed to be dead to self. So there should be no personal preferences in your life. Amen? In other words, you should be able to go anywhere and minister the life of God. Amen? You are to be in season and out of season ready to bring the word of God. When everything is going wrong in your life and you're, and you're standing in faith, God still says you have to be ready to minister to someone else. You still got a river of life flowing through you. You're supposed to have. You still have extra bread of life to give. Because you're to be ready in season and out of season. Hallelujah. 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 Some people just say, you know, I can't go to church because I just don't feel good today. You know, in my, some, I don't know what's going on, but I don't feel good about it. Well, get to church so you can feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I can't tell you how many times Charlene's told me you have to go. You're the pastor. <laughs> but honey, you don't know what I went through with half the people today. It's all right. You're the pastor. Get up and love them. Tell, tell them the truth. Come on. How many of you have stayed home because it just didn't feel right? The rest of you are liars. We're going to cast that devil out of you. <laughs> Huh? Try it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, and as we have our teams going out, we had intercessory prayer last night, church tonight. Tomorrow night, we're sending out the strike team. Saturday, we're doing the intersection prayer again. All the, how many of you know, man, I'm going to church every day. It gets easy to say, you know, I've already been there four times. I don't need to go again. Oh, come on. I'm just saying to all of us, we make a lot of decisions based on how we feel emotionally. We make a lot of decisions based on how we feel physically. And we're supposed to make our decisions based on how we live spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We're supposed to make those decisions spiritually. Because if we believe that God is our healer, then we should come to church. If we believe that God is wisdom and understanding and knowledge and I feel down, then I need to come to church. If I'm depressed or in depression and I believe he's the joy of my soul, then I need to come to church. We say we believe he's all these things, but when anything pops up, we make a decision not to come. And when I say we, I mean we. Amen? Hallelujah. It, you have to fight this battle to say, I'm going to love the way God loved. I mean, you know, Jesus probably felt it was inconvenient to go to the cross for us. Amen. I mean, he, he, uh, he had to feel that because he sweated great drops of blood resisting. Amen. His flesh didn't want to submit to the will of the Father. There was a battle that went on inside of him so that vessels were breaking and literally drops of blood were running out of him because he was fighting. The intense battle was so strong 
not to do the Father's will. Amen? And we get up and go, oh, man, something shot through my jaw. I don't think I'll go to church today. <laughs> Out of pain, you know? We can make decisions like that, but it doesn't bring us into the fullness of his life. It doesn't bring us into the promises that he's given us. It doesn't bring us into hope. It certainly doesn't give us any joy. Amen. Love. What is love? Love is not an emotion. Love is a commitment. It's a decision to be obedient to God and to be obedient joyfully because you love him for what he did for us and because he first loved us, we love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're driven. You should be driven by his love. Everybody say his love. His love. Not your love. Hallelujah. So there is no fear in love. How many of you love your spouse? How many of you loved your spouse if you don't have one now? How many of you would love to have a spouse? <laughs> How many of you love the thought of having a spouse? Now you love the thought of being totally alone, living in a cave all by yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Perfect love has no fear. And yet, in marriages, in Christian marriages, people are afraid something's going to happen. Because of something that's happened in the past. Something that's been said, something that's been done. And fear keeps them from loving each other completely. And yet they love the Lord and they love each other, but they're not being united in Christ the way they should be united because of something of the past or a thought of fear that is existing today. Amen. Folks, if you want your marriage made whole, you have to let all the fear drop to the ground powerless in your life and say, you know what? If they do something, my God is able to protect me, heal me, restore me, make a way for me, cause us to be able to overcome. I'm going to trust in a God that says when there is no way, he'll make a way. I'm going to trust in a God that said he'll be with me no matter what happens. So I'm going to let all that stuff just drop to the ground powerless in my life. Amen? Because the enemy puts a wall around you so that you're always on guard. And you remember what the other one said. Some of you remember things your spouse said to you 20 years ago. And every time the argument comes up, it gets renewed and refreshed again. Because you never let go. To the trusting God and saying, that's washed away. It's under the bridge. Hallelujah. We retain a memory of the infliction of hurt. And God says true love doesn't remember that. Because we hurt Christ. And he says he threw it as far as the east is from the west. He washed it never to look upon it again. The love of God is so powerful it can utterly set you free from every bondage in your life. And love brings joy. Joy produces praise. Praise brings His presence. His presence brings victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 5, 44, 46. But I say to you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. How about just trying to love your friends first? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you will love the way God is, wants us to love, your friends will draw closer, your family will draw closer. And if you love your enemies the way God wants us to love, He can break the yoke of bondage, remove their blinders, set them free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, if, and if they are resistant to that, 
That's on them. But you did what God wanted you to do. And you will continue to do that. Amen? So he says, but I say to you, love your enemies. Now I'm going to say something to you with all of my heart. Because I know this to be true in my own life. My own worst enemy is my own flesh. My own worst enemy is my own pride, my own ego. You have to learn how to love yourself before you can truly love someone else. And that's why Jesus died so you could understand that the God, the creator of heaven and earth, the God who made everything, the God who breathed breath into Adam and made him a living soul and created all mankind, says, I died for you. I love you. And the reason he did that is so you could begin to love yourself through his heart, through his eyes, through his knowledge, through his wisdom. And it's because of that love you say, Jesus, come into my life. Because you know there's someone who finally understands you. There's someone who's truly in love with you. You know, when you feel truly loved, you feel better about yourself. How many have ever said in your own life, nobody loves me? Some people have said that. Some people believe that. No one loves me. Yeah, that's a... That's a lie from hell. There's one who loves you even when you were yet a sinner. While we were yet still sinners, he demonstrated his love and died for us. Can't love themselves because of the things they continually say. How many of you have made a mess of things? How many of you no sooner than you cleaned up the mess, you made the same mess again? And how many of you are still making some of those messes? We have become, we have become professional mess makers. But we're only temporary cleaner uppers. We only clean it up until we feel the same way again. We only clean it up until we think the same way again. But God is a perfectional cleaner. He is the cleaner of all cleaners. Hallelujah. And if you'll let him love you, you'll start to love yourself the way God wants you to. And that love will cause you to fall deeply in love with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it'll cast out all the the boundaries in your life. How many people have ever been afraid, I'm going to lose something because I I don't have enough money to pay my bills? God, what are we going to do? Oh, Father, if you don't do something, something, you know, bad things are going to happen. Listen to me. You've got to cast that fear to the ground. If God is your provider, why do you fear? If you say, God is my provider, then live like he's your provider. Leaning not unto your own understanding, but leaning unto the word of the living God. Hallelujah. You see, we say we believe, but then what we feel and what we fear and what we're intimidated by tells us we've been lying to ourselves. Amen. This flesh... Paul said, I have to put it under daily so that I don't become a castaway while preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, it's no longer I that sinneth, but sin that dwelleth in this flesh. He said, I'm fighting a war, my spirit against my flesh. He's fighting it because the flesh wants to tell him he's not good enough, that he's evil. That it wants to give him an appetite to be rebellious against God and sin against God. But he said, I learned. I fight the fight to stay in the love of God. I fight the fight to stay in the right mind. I fight the fight to keep from sinning. Because I love God so much. Because Paul said... 
I know what I used to be. I know from where I have fallen. And he said, I am so thankful. And I'm paraphrasing him. But I'm so thankful and so grateful that my God has redeemed me and set me free. Hallelujah. So, love your enemies, and that means even loving yourself. Does that mean you love Satan? No. But I'm going to say this. How many people have ever gotten mad at Satan? Why? Because I got mad. I'm going to say something to you. Why are we mad at Satan who can't do anything to us unless we allow him to do it? Now, he can stir up people, throw blows at us. Amen? But even though people are throwing blows at you, you don't have to get mad at Satan because no matter what Satan does or who he uses, if you're in love, he can't touch you on here, in here. He can't change this up here. Stephen was being stoned to death, and what did he say? Forgive them, Father, lay this sin not to their charge, for they know not what they do. The very same thing Jesus said on the cross. You know, how many of you, if people started throwing stones at you, might throw some back at them? Just get in a rock fight, amen? Amen. Well, Steve, Stephen wasn't mad at them. Stephen was crying out for their salvation. Amen. You see, we have the right to choose to be mad at the enemy or mad at somebody that's stirred up or the right to say, Father, forgive them. Amen. Satan's got, God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'm going to take care of him. So why would I give my energy in hating him when I should be giving my energy into loving Christ? It's not to say we don't fight against the enemy or war against the enemy. But we are to be wise as a dove. Amen. Wise as a serpent, not as a dove. dove. Amen. Wise as a serpent. One how to defeat him, but stay in love. But stay in love. by love you see so God says even love your enemies he's telling us don't concentrate on being angry at what's happened in your life or who did it to you concentrate on the one that can heal you from that situation who can deliver you from that situation and can use you to deliver other people from it Amen. He's not saying ignore that there's a devil or ignore that there's an enemy. But if you concentrate all your time on him, you can't live for God. So like in our strategy for the city, how many of you know our weapons isn't yelling at the devil. Our weapons is, Father, be merciful. Send your spirit forth, Lord God. Father, forgive them their sin. Father, convict them and draw them in. Father, remove the blinders. Father, touch their heart. Father, open their ears. Father, open their eyes. Because we're concentrating on the answer, not the problem. And while we're concentrating on the answer, giving God glory, we're destroying the problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless those who curse you. Bless those who curse you. That doesn't mean when someone cusses you out, you just say, oh, God bless you. Because most cases, you didn't mean it. 
most cases you mean I'd like to hit you, but Christians change their vocabulary and say, God delivered me from a foul mouth, but bozo is still a four-letter word. Because it's said with the wrong attitude. It's said with the wrong heart. It's not the word, it's the heart with which it's spoken. What kind of idiot are you driving like that? You might as well cuss them out. Because out of your heart, it was still evil. Now, I'm not telling you to start using foul language again. But I'm telling you, deal with the issues of the heart that causes that to come up out of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. That's like, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Who goes around falling and goes, oh, glory to God, this is awesome. <laughs> count it all joy when the enemy's attacking you. Oh, come on, brother, that feels good. God is telling us how to get a hold of life. So what the enemy is doing has no effect in us. It doesn't pervert us. It doesn't change us. It doesn't cause us to lose ground. That's why he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and a sound mind. We can all look clean, but it don't mean we are clean. We can use the right words, and it still don't mean we're clean. It's the attitude of the heart with which you speak those words. I've always said this. You can say, I love you, or you can say, I love you. <laughs> Same exact words, totally different meaning. Totally different motivation. Totally different reason for speaking it. Same exact words, totally different. And Christians go around, oh man, I got rid of cussing a long time ago. You're cussing people out all the time. You just do it with better sounding words. Amen. So God, God is... God is love, and he's saying, hey, you're going to have to learn how to love even those who are spitefully using you, coming against you, hurting you, wounding you. Amen? Amen? And when you say, God bless you, it comes out of the depth of your spiritual being that you're asking God to bless them. What is the blessing you want them to receive? The blinders to fall off of their eyes so they can see the light of the gospel and therefore be regenerated. The blessing we want is that God renew their mind, that God draw them unto him, that they find salvation. That has to be the motivation of saying bless you. And not just a Christian word to use. Amen? We have Christian phrases, and they mean nothing unless they are genuine coming out of the heart of love. Amen. Do good to those who hate you. Oh my gosh, I got to do good? Can I just leave them alone? Amen. You guys are quiet. Why do I have to be good to those who hate me? How many have ever been offended by someone and you just, you'd just soon never see him again? And you'll say, sounding real spiritual, I love him with the love of the Lord. I don't ever want to see him. I can't stand him. Oh, but I love him with the love of the Lord. You know, in my soul, I forgave him. There they are. Run! I thought love stayed close enough to get wounded 700 or 490 times in a day. Yeah. 
Do good to those who hate you. Amen? Pray for those who spitefully use you. Pray for those who persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. That you might act like you are truly a child of God. You know, there's a lot of illegitimate children in the kingdom of God. It's what the Word of God says. It says, if you have bitterness in your heart, like Esau had, you are an illegitimate child. Why are you illegitimate? You haven't taken on his nature. You haven't been renewed in his character. You're not walking in his heart nor in his mindset. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of you, you still have your feet on the floor even though I'm stepping all over your toes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why do we pray for people that do these things? Why do we love them that do these things? Because that's what the children of God do. That's what the real children of God do. Amen? Church splits are caused by people who get upset at somebody in the church and their friends choose their side and the other group chooses their side and a church splits happen and a church split is nothing more than immature Christians not learning how to love one another, not learning how to lay down their life for one another, not learning how to overcome the attack of the enemy and letting strife and discord rise up in their own soul. You are an illegitimate child. Hallelujah. And the reason he says love them, he says this. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? God says, I created this earth to bless the just and the unjust. The sun you enjoy, they enjoy. The dirty air of Bakersfield you enjoy, they enjoy. You do know as of today, we are the dirtiest air in the world. Hallelujah. That's why we're all overweight. Every time you breathe, you gain a quarter pound. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's why you need to stop breathing for about six minutes. And just exhale real big. You'll lose weight. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's so unusual to go to the coast and breathe air you can't taste. (laughs) God says, look, I'm still shining on the evil because my heart still wants to save them. We look at the evil and we want to withdraw from them because they're evil people. That's that's been the mannerism of the church for years. We wouldn't get Christians to run for office. We wouldn't stand strong and proclaim what the gospel said. We just stood here because they're all evil and we'll have our nice little holy meeting here. That's as much as hell as out there. Because if we're not going to share what we have, we are the one who received the one talent. And God says, take from the one that had one talent, give to the one that had five, and throw that one out into outer darkness where there is much pain and gnashing of teeth. To keep what we have inside ourselves and not share it is a sin. Because anything not of faith is sin. 
And yet the church has been so filled with hurts and wounds and people feeling inadequate. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know if I can do anything. I don't know what my gift and my calling is. How about be like Jesus? How about doing what the Word of God says? Well, as we keep going out, as I even said Sunday, as we keep going out, we're going to get all kinds of people coming into our church. People that don't smell so good and people that aren't dressed the way you're dressed and people whose hair isn't kept the way they keep it. But the most important thing, some of them are going to be sold out to Satan. Are we going to love them or tell them they can't come in? We're going to love them. Hallelujah. We're going to show them the way of righteousness and the way of life. You know what? If they won't change, they won't stay. Because they can't stay in the presence of God. Because the uneasiness in their own soul will drive them out. But if they stay, God's going to save them. God's going to make a change in them. And folks, I want to say again something to you. You know, most of us, you know, we have the awesome privilege of having showers in our house or a bathtub. Right. We take showers and baths. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, how many you know not too long ago in this country, people didn't take a bath or a shower, but once a week, if that, and if they were cowboys out on the open range, they didn't take one for months. They'd find a river and finally jump in. Amen? Amen? I was out at River Lakes Park, and this couple walked by, and I didn't think nothing of them, but after they walked by, the odor was so strong. Yeah. Tremendous odor. But you know what? We can't turn away from them because they don't smell the way you want them to smell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day I came home a little sweaty. Sharon says, man, you don't smell so good. She says, you need to take a shower. She still loves me. Hallelujah. I did take a shower, though. Hallelujah. What would she say back there? <laughs> how are we going to love you have to make a decision folks because with what's going to be happening in our world and this great shaking so that everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that which cannot be shaken will remain how are we going to love all the people that are shaking in this world? How are we going to love all the people that are looking for answers but they're looking in the wrong place? How are we going to love the hurting that might end up hurting you? Are we still going to love and forgive them? Are we still going to extend the hand of fellowship? Are we going to have to withdraw from them but still pray for them and love them because they won't change. Yeah, the there's, there's scripture says, knock at the door. If they don't receive you, leave it. Go to the next house. Yeah. Doesn't mean you quit praying for them. It doesn't mean you don't love them. It means they weren't right. Hallelujah. Amen? Right. Amen? How many of you have ever grown tomatoes? And as soon as the, little, the first little, little tomato shows up, you pick it. You don't pick it because it's not ready yet. Amen? You want it to stay on that vine and see it ripen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's when you take it off the vine. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to start looking at people. Is their soul ready? And you can't make that judgment unless you extend the gospel. And then you extend it again. And if they reject it, then you just realize they're not ripe yet. I'm going to continue to water them because water will make them turn ripe. 
I'm going to pray that God keeps the weeds growing up around them so the weeds won't choke out that life that we've been trying to plant. Amen? Amen. Amen? We're going to do what is right before God and love the way we should love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God, God loves us. He cares for us. And he wants you to be right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you can't even serve God with a heart that's right until you're right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how do you know that when something's ripe, you can cut it and you can consume it? Amen. And it won't make you sick. Amen. Hallelujah. You as a child of God have to get ripe in God so that you can start consuming everything that God is inside of you. Amen. So that you can start putting it into practice and other people can consume what you have in Christ Jesus. If you're not ripe, all you're going to do is go out to them and say, Oh, we're out here. Jesus loves you. And then you stumble with your words. And you know anointing flows. Because you're more concerned about what they're thinking about you while you're trying to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. You're not ripe yet. But the continue of going will make you ripe. Hallelujah. So don't worry about your failure. Look towards the success of becoming ripe where the anointing flows. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Where the presence of God is made manifest. Look at your own self and say, you know, I'm hooked up to the vine. The word of God says. He's the vine. We're the branches. So you got to look at yourself and say, God, I want to get ripe. Turn to someone and say, God, ripen them up. Now tell somebody with all authority, get right. <laughs> because we have to hurry up. There's an urgency in the Spirit of God to get the church mobilized, the body of Christ. Walking in everything that God has already taught us. Without fear, trepidation, intimidation. But a seasoned... You know, you don't season something until it's ripe. Until it's ready to be consumed. Then you season it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as we get seasoned, we'll walk into the season. Did you hear me? As you become seasoned, we'll walk into the season of great harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be seasoned in the love of God, seasoned in the holiness of God, seasoned in our purpose for serving God, seasoned in the love of God that transforms us and renews our mind, seasoned in the holiness, this is wrong with God, this is the way of God. Because when we are seasoned, people can taste and see that God is good. Hallelujah. They're going to taste your words. They're going to taste your actions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many great soldiers of the Lord sitting in here tonight. When I say many, I mean every one of you. A prophetic word for you to grab hold of that you are a warrior in the kingdom of God. And it is time to stand up. And it is time to enter the boot camp. In a season of your life for the refiner's fire to perfect you in the love of God. That you would rise up seasoned in God and go forth in power and in might. In the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. With the word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword. Flowing out of your mouth. A fire of life of the Holy Spirit coming out of you. And energizing the souls of everyone around you. You are the army of the living God. And our Lord God says, rise up and walk 
in your anointing. Walk in your gifting. Walk in your calling. Walk in my heart and my mind, saith the Lord, and you shall see your enemies fall at your right hand and at your left hand. You shall see thousands be drawn unto me, saith the Lord. Rise up, O army. Season yourself in my love and in my presence. Season yourself and know and taste of my anointing. Hear my voice and respond to it. Receive your miracle for your family, for your healing, for my soldiers. They are not weak, saith the Lord, for I have met every need. I have healed every body. I have renewed every mind. Stand up, O church. Arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, Pastor, you don't know what we've gone through. I, like I said the other day, you ain't gone through nothing. Why do you reflect? Why do I reflect on something that happened today? or yesterday why do we reflect on that when we have the king of kings to look at when we can look at the glory of the Lord people will say but God he hasn't done what he said he hasn't been faithful to his word you just spoke out in unbelief, and a double-minded man received nothing from God. You are your worst enemy. Forgive yourself and love God and believe what the Lord God has spoken. And don't let the enemy steal your faith. Don't let the enemy wound your marriage. Don't let the enemy take anything from you. Be the soldier of the living God against whom the gates of hell cannot stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word, Father. It is truly a word of true love to walk with you, to glorify you, to not be offended by anyone or anything, Lord God, not to hold anything in our heart against anyone, but, Father, to be totally free from stress and strife, and anger, and bitterness, and jealousy, and envy, and maliciousness, but Lord God, free to walk in your love, your presence, and your power. Hallelujah, Father. Free to walk in your anointing, Lord God. We give you all the praise and the glory, Father. Stir us up. You ought to say, Lord, stir me up. Stir up. God says, stir up the gift within you. Stir it up. Stir it up. I'm going to close. Yes, Lord. Some people in here are stirred up in their soul, and it's from hell, and it's not from heaven. You're stirred up with something that has happened or said or been done. And you're stirred up and you're sad and you're depressed. I want you to know that if you keep walking in that, death is knocking at your door. The enemy has an open way to come and steal, kill, and destroy. And you need to throw it down. And you need to forget it. And you need to be washed from it. And you need to receive the joy of the salvation that you walk in. In the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Father, that we are excited to serve you, excited to fulfill your mission in our lives, excited to be used. We say, here we are, Lord. Use our hands. Use our mouth. Renew our mind. Hallelujah, Lord God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We give you the praise. We give you the glory in Jesus' matchless and holy name. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord.
Glory to the Lord. Well, God bless you. If you need prayer, come up. Hallelujah. If you don't need prayer, go. In the mighty name of Jesus, strike team. Be here tomorrow night, 630. I'll send you out, praise God, to the intersections. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless.